So in this chapter, we will look at space vector PWM of inverters in uh, three-phase applications. So advantages are that uh, we utilize the DC bus uh, fully without any hardware addition, just the controller is different. And it has the same simplicity as the carrier modulated PWM. And we have seen sign modulated uh, uh, PWM before. And uh, also it's very applicable in vector control, DTC and V over F control. So it, ha it has all the advantages. So let's uh, start with uh, our basic uh, uh, three-phase uh, switch mode inverter where we have a DC bus and we have three bipositional switches. And uh, then we know how to define the, the space vector in terms of uh, the three voltages that get applied across the phases of these three windings. And uh, we use uh, A axis as the reference axis. And that's why the superscript A over here. But uh, you know we may keep it or not keep it. It's up to us. But uh, how can we define these voltages, uh, VA, VB, and VC, in terms of voltages uh, of the, these poles, for example, A, with respect to this uh, negative DC point N, VA N, and uh, but there's a you know there's a difference between VA and VA N, V. A N, and that is uh, additional voltage V N, which is the the voltage of this point with respect to let's say this hypothetically is neutral, uh, is grounded here. But we don't have grounded. We could have said little little N, and we could have written it that way. But nevertheless, uh, each volt phase voltage V A, V B, and V C can be defined in terms of the pole voltages and the the voltage of this negative. A DC bus over here. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, we know that, uh, you know, the, uh, the sum of these three uh, quantities, uh, exponentials is equal to zero. So if we write, uh, you know, in this equation above for VA, VB, and VC in this form, and uh, we are, you know, uh, multiplying each of these voltages by this uh, axis orientations over here and uh, applying this equation over here, we can see that uh, space vector we end up with is in terms of uh, pole voltages here. And what are the pole voltages? Well, that's the DC bus voltage times the sw switching signal Q sub A, which takes on two values. It's one when the switch is up and it's zero when it's down. So if you do that, then uh, we can also write and the space voltage um, um, voltage space vector in terms of uh, this DC input times these uh, uh, switching signals here. All right, so having done that, uh, let's look at what are the basic uh, voltage vectors. At any t given time, uh, we can only get uh, eight states, out of which uh, you know six are active vectors and uh, two are zero. So here we use kind of a binary notation that uh, when all the three switches are in the down position, we have V0, uh, zero, zero, 0, here, which is really a zero vector here, as shown here. Now here uh, we see that uh, this A phase, uh, the pole for A is in the up position, then the, for B and C, there's in the down position, so 0, 0 and one here, that gives us this V1 uh, space vector, so to speak, which is shown over here, right here. And uh, it is really Vd times e to the j0. And similarly, uh, we can write for other conditions where here uh, B is up, but the other two are zero. We get V2, which is over here, and we have uh, in polar form this note, in this expression. And then uh, <clears throat> when you have both uh, B and A up, we get this V3, which is this. And when only four is, uh, when only C is up and uh, B and C, B and A, I should say, are zero, uh, we get uh, V4, which is over here. And uh, then uh, V5 is when uh, A and C are in the up position. And we get uh, this 
and then for V6 uh, we have you know B and C are up and A is in the down position and we get uh, uh, this uh, this one over here okay so and uh, then again I, I shouldn't forget that when all the switches are in the up position uh, then we get V7 which is again a zero vector because all of them are in the up, up position so it's like we are putting a short across this inverter just like when we do the here then all the switches are in the down position okay so these uh, v0 and v7 basic uh, these are the basic vectors so this is all <coughs> uh, an inverter can supply uh, provide at any instant of time but our goal and then we can divide this into six sectors a sector one which is between this one and this one here sector two which is between this one and this one and so on and uh, let's say we want to uh, you know provide to the machine this uh, uh, space vector voltage space vector vs over here so how do we do that well we'll take a little bit of this a little bit of this and a little bit of both of these zero states over here and uh, achieve this here so that's what we want to do and so what um, so the objective, as I said, is to achieve uh, uh, desired uh, reference uh, stereo voltage space vector. It has to be, we need to keep the switching frequency constant. We want smallest uh, instantaneous deviation from its reference value. Uh, we want to maximize the utilization of the available DC bus. We want to also have the lowest ripple in the motor current and minimize switching loss in the inverter. So all these things uh, kind of uh, are achieved uh, if, um, you know, of course, so there may be certain conditions where the, you know, how you synthesize that desired voltage space vector may be different. But uh, in general, it's, you know, it's synthesized by means of two instantaneous basic non-zero vectors that form the sector in which the average voltage space vector is to synthesize so it's important to note is that this space vector that we are trying to synthesize is really an average over a time period okay whereas what i was showing you uh, those were instantaneous uh, basic uh, voltage vectors and we also make use of the zero voltage vectors such that transition causes only one switch status to min to change to minimize the inverter switching loss so all that would happen as uh, we describe in the switching scheme uh, data. So let's say that our voltage vector average uh, is, to be, to, is to be synthesized over here. So we can see that uh, you know, if you take the projection of this uh, uh, in this way, uh, we, are, we have to apply this uh, V1 uh, basic uh, voltage vector for an instant, for an interval x, we'll apply uh, V3 uh, for an interval y here. So this x and y are these intervals uh, multiplied by the switching time period and then divided by the switching time period over here. And then we have for for z time t sub s interval, we will apply zero vector. So that's multiplied by zero over here, right? So you know, with this, we can write that uh, this uh, voltage space vector that we are wishing to, uh, to synthesize on an average basis is given by these two over here. And over a switching time period, we can appreciate that x plus y plus z should be equal to 1 because that's the switching time period. So from here, we could also see that uh, you know, this v voltage space vector, the average that we are trying to synthesize is written in a polar form like this, and it's equal to this interval x times v1, which is this here, times uh, y, and uh, not times, but plus, I should say, y times uh, v3, which is over here. So this is v1 uh, right here, and this is v3 right here, and we multiply this x and y, okay? So the x and y are unitless uh, quantities here. So this is the case for, you know, uh, voltage vector being synthesized in sector one, but uh, that can be done for any other uh, sectors. So that's uh, not, not a mystery. 
But uh, important thing to note is that uh, this, the maximum that we can synthesize for this average uh, uh, voltage space vector uh, is given by this expression. Uh, you know, we can write it uh, in this form here. We have to recognize that uh, this uh, maximum, uh, you know, cannot go outside this hexagon and is of constant amplitude as it rotates at uh, synchronous speed, this uh, omega sync over here. So th the biggest circle that we can fit in this uh, hexagon hexagonal space uh, that we have to find. So what is the limit? So the limit occurs right here at uh, 30 degrees from A axis over here, because uh, you know that's really the midpoint over here where the radius uh, is, uh, you may say, the smallest at compared to any other position of this uh, desired space vector. So we can say that Vs max here is uh, you know, DC bus voltage times uh, you know, cosine of the 30 degrees, which is this value over here. So if that is the maximum that we can get for we, you know, the space vector peak, and we know that the phase maximum peak is uh, two thirds of this here. So we get uh, this value over here. And we can express that in terms of RMS by this is the phase quantity maximum. So we multiply by square root of three to get the line to line, and then divide by square root of two to get the RMS. So line to line comes by multiplying by square root of three, and uh, dividing it by square root of two gives us the RMS, and that comes out to be 0 0.707 times V sub D. But let's compare that with what happens when we have sine. Uh, PWM. In sine PWM, the maximum phase voltage can become is VD over 2. Okay, So to make it line to line, you multiply it by a square root of 3. So that's the peak. And then you divide by a square root of 2. Then you get this quantity over here. So you can see that uh, making use of uh, pulse width modulation as compared to sine PWM for the same given DC bus voltage uh, we are able to achieve a higher amplitude of uh, the output AC. So uh, without doing anything, just changing the, the way we control, uh, we are getting this uh, maximum utilization of the DC bus in this uh, three-phase case. Okay. So having said that, uh, how do we implement that? Well, first of all, uh, let's uh, you know we can we can have a table lookup and we can see how we should, in a given sector, what uh, basic space vectors to apply, what zero vectors to apply, in what sequence we should use them, all those things. But, uh, you know, instead of doing all that, we can use uh, what is also done in practice, is that we use carrier modulated PWM, just like we do in uh, sine PWM. So, so carrier signal is triangular over here, and, uh, you know, it is uh, shown to be going uh, positive and negative, whereas in some other books that I have written, I have used it. I have used it as going between zero and positive only. But in this case, uh, so that's kind of a, a difference uh, that it's go, go, you know going from positive peak to the negative peak this carrier, and then we are controlling uh, the switch. Uh, these switches Q A, Q B, and Q C by comparing this uh, carrier with some control voltage. Uh, you know, for these three phases over here, A, B, and C. And uh, we know that, uh, you know, we can also derive this that instantaneously, uh, you know, sum of all these three voltages is equal to zero. And uh, so what we need to do is to uh, take these voltages uh, that uh, we need to apply to the machine and subtract them with uh, a quantity called V sub K, which is written over here and I'll describe it in a second, and divide by Vd over 2, and that gives us the control voltage for phase A. So you take this quantity and multiply by V triangular hat, which is right here, which we know, we can get the control voltage for phase A, similarly for B and C. So this is derived, uh, well, it's not derived actually in the textbook. It's left as a homework problem. So what happens is that in this case, this uh, quantity Vk, V sub k that we are subtracting from this uh, 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 phase voltages 
that we have to produce uh, is uh, given by this expression. It's maximum of uh, these three phase voltages plus minimum of these three. So we pick the minimum of these three, we pick the maximum of these three, and divide by two. So, and also uh, here, this z interval is really, you know, sum of the zero state, uh, well, z zero, I should say, where we are applying v zeros a basic vector and Z7 where we are applying V7 a basic factor here. So if you do this comparison of control voltages with the triangular waveform, uh, we get uh, the, the wave pole voltages to be looking like this over here. And you can see that uh, they satisfy the fact that uh, there is only one transition uh, every time the things change over here. So that uh, is, uh, so what we have done is we have taken these two, uh, you know, it automatically happens that uh, z these two zero states are uh, on the, uh, the, the two far sides of the, uh, you know, active vectors, so to speak. And uh, so this is what is done uh, in, uh, in Simulink here. This uh, system is modeled and we see that uh, uh, the control voltages, instead of looking uh, sinusoidal, uh, which was the case in uh, sine PWM, I look uh, of this waveform over here. So, so that pretty much uh, completes.